Twitter, as we know it today, is a massive movement for debates and jokes on politics, tech, finance, relationships, sports, etc. What seems like an established venture headed by Elon Musk began from somewhere. Its history holds the genesis of the app's toxicity. You'll feel differently about the Blue app after watching this video. Before we proceed, please subscribe to our channel to stay abreast with our latest uploads. Now, let's begin. To better understand what Twitter has turned into, let's take a trip down memory lane to over a decade ago when the story began. Twitter, now one of the most popular social media platforms, was founded by a team comprising Noah Glass, Biz Stone, Evan Williams, and Jack Dorsey. Noah and Evan built Odeo, a podcasting platform. But when Apple announced the invention of iTunes, they knew their business stood no chance. Therefore, it was only sensible to diversify and invest in other ventures. The employees regrouped to form different brainstorming techniques. Jack, a former employer with Odeo, was paired with Noah. In one of their meetings, he suggested they build a platform where people could share what they were doing. Mind you, Jack came up with suggestions, but keep watching to see the twist. Noah loved the suggestion, and work commenced. In February 2006, they presented their idea to the company and initially called the site TWTTR. Although Noah Glass had been in the picture from the word go, we don't hear about him today. It is believed that while Jack had the idea of creating Twitter, he was less enthusiastic than Noah. Biz and Evan showed little interest in it too. Therefore, early investors recognised Noah as Twitter's founder. As the social media platform grew, Evan and Noah fell out. It was speculated that Noah wanted Odeo and Twitter to split so he could become Twitter's CEO. You would think it would be easy since he was committed to the company's success. He felt Evan didn't want to give him the honour, so he shared his concerns with Jack, whom he thought had his back. Unknown to him, Jack and Evans were conspiring to push him out. In fact, Jack threatened to leave the company if Noah wasn't sacked. Noah felt the broad daylight betrayal, but could not do anything. On the other hand, Evan was scared that he might lose Twitter. Therefore, he sacked Noah, the backbone behind the app. Noah left with little money, but Jack and Evan made millions a few minutes after Twitter went public. Jack and Evan allowed power, money and fame to get the best of them. It appears that Twitter's woes have roots in the first mistake it ever made, the betrayal of trusted staff. Nearly 12 years after Noah was booted out of Twitter, the platform has become a thorn in the flesh of many. In most cases, it is uncontrollable, and many nasty things are allowed to fly. Its over 450 million active users have a swell time communicating their thoughts with tweets and reaching out to a large audience, but there's more to it. Before we get into details of why this platform is considered top on the list of most toxic apps, we must appreciate its benefits. Most modern day activism began on Twitter. Many of the key players in the Arab Spring used the social network to express their thoughts against the government. Many societies didn't only gain power against their oppressors, but they defeated them. So yes, we give it to Twitter. Outside that, there's a lot to be worried about. We begin with Twitter users and how they paraded themselves as the most toxic humans on the planet. Recent studies from Simple Texting shows that Twitter tops the list of the most toxic apps, with its toxicity rating pegged at 7.82%. About 38.1% of respondents in the research said the microblogging platform is a breeding ground for trolls. 6 out of 10 people in the survey said they were scared to air their views on the app for fear of negative feedback and cyberbullying. Trolls are sometimes faceless people lurking around social media apps to scour news feeds and comment sections with negative comments. These humans peddle harmful content about ethnicity, culture and race, leading many to depression. If you argue that trolls aren't the problem on this app, I agree with you to an extent. The real problem is that Twitter enables these people. In subsequent revelations, I'll show you how. Twitter is also the hub of fake news. Many stories emanating from the app were embellished, and the truth emerged after thousands of retweets. Three MIT scholars were curious about this, and investigated why false news spreads more rapidly on Twitter than real ones. In their words, we found that falsehood diffuses significantly farther, faster, deeper, and more broadly than the truth, in all categories of information, and in many cases by an order of magnitude. 
the scholars discovered that the spread of false information is not due to bots programmed to disseminate their stories. Instead, false news spreads faster because people retweet without fact checking. Further studies also show that false stories are 70% more likely to be retweeted than true ones. It takes true stories six times as long to reach 1500 people as it does for false reports to reach the same number of people. This study was motivated by the 2013 Boston Marathon bombings, which received attention on Twitter. The news was exaggerated so much that most of what was peddled were rumours. Because people get noticed faster when they share new information, there's a tendency to cook up lies to be seen. Most times, Twitter takes down such posts only after thousands of retweets. What's it they say about medicine after death? Twitter appears to be the favourite app for many adult content stars. Unlike other social media sites, these stars are given a special place on the app. In 2022, the platform promised to monetize adult content. It said it would allow creators to sell OnlyFans-style paid subscriptions. While adult content may not be wrong, Twitter went too far when it refused to delete harmful child content, claiming it didn't violate any policy. A teenager, John Doe, was chatting with a blackmailer posing as a 16-year-old. He exchanged nude pictures with the supposed lover until it turned to blackmail. He was asked to send more photos, or else the ones already sent would be shared on social media. Acting under duress, the 13-year-old sent more clips of him being intimate. Tired of the threats, he blocked the abuser, but months later, he woke up to his pictures and videos on Twitter. You would think that Twitter would take it down immediately after it was posted. Well, the tech giants turned a blind eye and didn't do anything about it, despite several reports. The company responded to the reports by saying, Thanks for reaching out. We've reviewed the content and didn't find a violation of our policies, so no actions will be taken at this time. At the time, the video had over 167,000 views and 220,000 retweets. They were willing to remain in business, not minding that the child faced vicious bullying and harassment in school when his classmates watched it. John's mother later reached out to an agent from the Department of Homeland Security, who ensured that the video was taken down. It was then that Twitter suspended the account. The child's family sued the tech giant and accused it of hosting people who use the platform to exchange child porn material for profit. From trolls to fake news and sharing indecent content, Twitter plays a huge role in indulging creators. Many have been trolled off Twitter because they couldn't find the perfect way to react. In light of this, it is shocking that Twitter doesn't automate the identification of hate speech. Even when someone reports abuse, Twitter's response is often slow. You may argue that curtailing these tweets early is daunting since the app records at least 350,000 tweets per minute. Twitter can handle this traffic if they want. Take YouTube, for instance. The video streaming platform receives over 500 hours of new video every minute, but captures copyright infringement before the clip goes live. This is why the platform is the least toxic social media site today. The company can automate the process to quickly identify when so many tweets are targeted against a user. I get that Twitter encourages free speech, but people like Leslie Jones won't agree. The biggest irony is that a renowned social media troll, Elon Musk, now owns Twitter. You don't expect a man who once called President Joe Biden a damp sock puppet to do anything much about trolls. After taking over the site on October 27th, 2022, he promised to revamp the blue app. Your guess is as good as mine. Nothing will change. Twitter may never repent from toxicity especially as their boss is the greatest enabler. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and click the subscribe button if you haven't already. See you in another episode.